Hey, I'm here with a list of demands. Follow the show wherever you listen. Subscribe, share, like, and comment on the show on YouTube. Follow any and all of my social media as well. All of the links are in the description. And finally, if you're a real fan, which most of you aren't, head on over to buymeacoffee.com, use the link in my description, and buy me a goddamn coffee. It supports the show, which is me. So you're supporting me. Now that you've successfully ignored that, go ahead and enjoy today's episode. Hello, everybody, and good afternoon, good evening. I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, we're here with that bonus episode that I kind of promised to you and really don't want to do because I feel like a bag of smashed assholes. Now, with that being said, I am here. I am, I guess, what you would call late. However, these are, epi- these are extra episodes. I'm not, uh, I'm not holding them in any kind of regard that I would with my normal ones. In fact, this one might not even be as long as normal. But anyway, who gives a fuck? Why not just start the episode? So, uh, <laughs> the, anyone who listened to yesterday's episode knows that it was recorded before Christmas, so I didn't have anything to say about Christmas. I don't have anything to say about any of that shit. Um, but I do have a couple uh, funny anecdotes and funny stories that is probably what I'm going to roll with today because I am sick. Still, that has become uh, just part of everybody's lives. Everybody right now, for whatever reason, is just getting sick uh, constantly. Everybody I know is combating a cough or has a runny nose. They have itchy eyes. They're tired. uh, They can't breathe. When they bend over, their lower back uh, hits them with shooting pains. Their knees are aching. Their heads uh, are constantly dizzy. They suffer from vertigo and low iron for the first times in their lives. No family history of it. There are these uh, upswings of sickle cell anemia in uh, even even in white people. They're getting that. Um, there is uh, people are bleeding from the eyes. They're losing their eyesight. They can't see. Uh, people are becoming geriatric overnight. They're 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 aging at at a at an extremely fast pace. People are waking up. People are going to sleep twenty five and waking up seventy eight. And, uh, and, and going back and forth, which, of course, can't be good for the immune, uh, immune system, uh, it is people, uh, medicine has no answer for this. Nobody really knows what the fuck's going on. Why is everybody so sick all the time? Why uh, can I not wake up and feel good about moving forward this day? Why, is it, why does it feel and sound like I am constantly underwater uh, why is there pressure on my head and behind my eyes? Why am I unable to function unless I've uh, taken a really hot 45-minute uh, shower that for some of you costs money but for me does not, so I have the luxury of doing so? But why do I have the chills? Why are my knees knocking? Why can't? Uh, why, why uh, is my sperm count low? Why do I have dark circles under my eyes? Why are there nose hairs? There's just an endless, there, it's, I mean, I'm obviously being funny and goofy, but this is literally what reality has been for the past few months. Everybody has been just sick in some way, shape, or form, and nobody has an explanation. Nobody knows if it's uh, COVID, a new COVID, a new fucking sickness altogether, Maybe it's uh, some kind of environmental factors. Nobody, uh, nobody knows what the fuck it could be. Nobody has any answers. Everyone is just, well, we're just sick. We're just sick. Everyone is just, uh, you know, there's stuff going around. Lots of stuff going around. That's it. Forever now, there's just going to be stuff going around. Yeah, I know, in the, it, it's something that people say, right? Oh, there's something going around. But that's usually it. It's something going around. And not everybody you know is getting hit with it. I remember hearing that, and I'd see, like, a few kids in class, and they'd be sick. I'm like, oh, wow, but it wasn't everybody. And everybody has something. So it's something, it's, there's a bunch of things that are just around. Here are some things that are around. Be careful. Everybody's immune system is slowly being... 
uh, more and more diminished based on the products that we're, we're used and the environments that we live in uh, and, and our way of life. Our immune systems are becoming shit. So just exist with that. Understand that you're just going to be sick all the time and you're just going to have the same old medicine that they're going to give you and, uh, and that's that. So I don't know. I think I got sick off of uh, something stupid that I had to do the other day, which obviously refutes everything that I just said. But um, I think people like to laugh when I'm in pain. So that's, that's what uh, this next story is. So the uh, last Friday, it was frigid outside. It was cold. I mean, it's been real cold. It's been very cold uh, where I live. And uh, Friday night, I wanted to go see the um, I wanted to go see the movie Babylon, which, by the way, is a very good movie. Babylon with Brad Pitt and uh, Margot Robbie and the other kid who uh, this might be his breakout role. I'm not sure. I've, I haven't seen him before, but the other guy was considered the star in the movie. And uh, who else is in it? Toby Maguire, is that his name? Whatever. He plays a psycho. But anyway, it's a really good movie. Uh, filthy, very filthy, disgusting, really, uh, especially at the beginning of the movie. But nonetheless, very entertaining. I, uh, I wanted to go watch that movie, and it was absolutely freezing outside. And I don't remember what I did in the daytime before that, but I don't think it was much. I don't think I did much. But I was like, I really want to go see this movie. It was uh, the, the first night it came out at the theater. So I was like, fuck yeah, let's do it. So uh, I go and I treat myself to, for whatever reason, guys, for whatever reason, I went to Olive Garden. I went to Olive Garden, okay? I did. Antonio, I hate Italian-Americans. Uh, Barbosa went to Olive Garden. I went to Olive Garden, I think, one time when I was a child. I'm not sure why we went as a family. My mom, my dad, me, and I think my brother might have been a baby. And we, uh, we went. And as a kid, I, uh, I don't remember it being, you know, I barely remember the experience, if I'm being honest. And, uh, and as I got older, I never, ever, 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 ever wanted to ever go there. I just had a... Uh, a a complete disdain for going to that place. And I never really examined why, I suppose. I, (laughs) I guess, um, I don't know. I don't know. I had some weird cravings. Sometimes you have a weird craving. It's like I was pregnant. I had a weird, it's like that, uh, it's like a few weeks ago when I said I went to the strip club and spent all that money. I had a weird craving to go do that. I had a weird craving to go spend hundreds of dollars that I don't have uh, to go be with a filthy woman in a in a redly in a red lit room. So I uh, I don't know I I uh, I, wa- I said fuck it we're gonna go to Olive Garden and see what it's all about. I know that the breadsticks and the salad right I know about that, um, but I also was like I'm gonna go do some uh, Christmas shopping. I didn't do any Christmas shopping. <laughs> I uh, I went to Olive Garden. I spent forty dollars on myself. Forty dollars. Really, I wanted to go because I wanted to take a, uh, a dessert with me to the movie. That's how much of a fat pig I am. I want, not only was I sneaking in candy, I, was, I wanted to sneak in a piece of cheesecake, which I did. Uh, it's a great idea, if I'm being honest. If you live or if the movie theater you go to is next to some kind of a restaurant, which most of them are, go ahead, get yourself a nice little to-go dessert or something, right? And you put that in your jacket. You got to wear a jacket. If you don't wear a jacket, don't go to the movies in the uh, in the summertime because then you can't wear a jacket. Or you can wear cargo pants. I don't know. Maybe there's other ways to do it. Maybe some places that you bring a backpack. I don't. I have no fucking clue. But if you can find a way to get a dessert into the movie theater, great idea. Uh, that's something that Caroline told me a while ago. Great idea on her part. And I and I uh, I thank her for the for the information. But I, um, <clears throat> that's really what I wanted to do. But I was like, let's see what's up with this shit. Now, mind you, I've obviously openly spoken about my disdain for the Italian-American culture, the stigma, the whole thing, and I greatly dislike it. And Olive Garden is probably, 
uh, the poster child of those people. And honestly, not really. I, sh- I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that at all. That's not true at all. Because if there's one thing most Italian Americans can do is they can eat well. Okay? They don't necessarily go to Olive Garden. That's more for like really white people, white Americans who, who don't have access to Italian food in any facet. Right, unless they grew up in an Italian neighborhood and they know, you know, uh, good bread or what, you know, whatever the shit that that you can pick up on just by being around uh, even Italian American people is better than growing up in a completely Irish neighborhood or a completely suburban white whatever. So it's really made for uh, like Midwestern people, uh, white people who haven't really been exposed to a. Um, you know, it's it's just like uh, anything else. It's just a bastardized fucking example of a culture. Taco Bell is the same fucking thing. Uh, but I love Taco Bell, so I'm not going to talk shit about them. <laughs> but uh, Olive Garden, Olive Garden is, it's not really for Italian Americans. So let me refute that point. Let me cut the legs off that uh, right away. It's for white people who really don't know any better. They don't know any better. They don't really, maybe they've been to Italian restaurants. They don't care to go uh, all out with that type of thing. They'd just rather hit an Olive Garden the way we would, anybody would hit, hit a Chili's. But at least Chili's, it's like chain bar food. Like it's not chain uh, ethnic food. Ethnic food shouldn't be in a chain of any sort. There's no, uh, the, the whole reason why people eat food from other cultures is to learn something typically right i mean i'm not saying that you know you're on vacation somewhere and you're eating a a a bratwurst in germany on the street and you're like hmm this is very uh i feel very in tune with with germany and their and their roots and whatever i don't uh i don't i don't necessarily mean that but you know when, when you when you want when you try ethnic food, you hope it's being made by uh, those people, right? The, the, the culture that it's – by the culture. If you're getting uh, Mexican food, you want it to be made by Mexican people. If you're getting Italian food, Italian people. Uh, and obviously that's very rare, right? Here in America, you go to any restaurant. It's usually Spanish people in the kitchen unless it's like a, a Chinese or an Asian restaurant. Then it's usually uh, Asians in the kitchen. But – I'm just saying that it's mostly Hispanic people in the kitchen. But you at least want the illusion, right, of authenticity. You want it to be authentic. Maybe that's, that's, the, that's the point that I'm trying to make. When you get cultural food, you want it to be authentic. You want it to kind of represent the nationality as best as, 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 uh, as it can with most things, right? Now, Chinese food doesn't follow that. Most of us, we don't really care for uh, traditional Chinese food. I feel like it's that's tough to find in the first place. I'm sure there's some high-end Chinese places that you can go to, and they serve traditional Chinese meals. But typically, we have just accepted when it comes to Chinese food the American version, and uh, most people are happy with that. Now, that's from my experience. I I never lived in an in a Asian, predominantly Asian. Uh, society or, or culture or neighborhood, and I'm sure that they would disagree and say that uh, they know they know real Asian food, real Chinese food. Um, and they would take a stance more like where I'm coming from because I grew up very Italian, predominantly the Italian neighborhoods, uh, plus I am Italian, obviously. So that where I'm sitting... Olive Garden is dog shit, okay? Uh, that's that's really the point of this whole thing. Olive Garden is dog shit. There's another one. I think it's called Fazoli's, right? There's none around here. I've seen them in the Midwest. Supposedly that one's even worse, okay? Um, but Olive Garden, it's, it, uh, it's not good. It's not good at all, but I wanted to go in there because it was close to the whatever, and I, was, and I had a craving to, uh, to bomb my insides. You ever just feel like... Just, just carpet bombing your intestine, your lower intestine, just hitting it with the kitchen sink, finding a bunch of, just the worst shit you can get. Sometimes I go to a buffet, any buffet. Really, there's, I mean, only there's only really Chinese buffets, 
And there's one around here that's terrible. I go to it and I feel awful. I'm like, oh, God, afterwards, it fucks my whole day up. I'll eat it. If I eat it at like two in the afternoon, I'm fucked, dude. Nothing's happening for the rest of the day. I'm ruined. There's just a sodium overload. My stomach is bloated. My body is fat. I just, there's no part of me that wants to do anything, and I won't. I legitimately will not. So I, uh, sometimes I do that, though. Sometimes you, you're just self-destructive enough. You're just in, uh, in or, or you're just doing good enough where you're like, all right, let's go, uh, let's go fuck all this up with some chili cheese fries or something, you know? And I do that, right? Or <clears throat> there's a bunch of different reasons you do it. You do it because you're, you're uh, fucked up already, right? And I mean, like, on, on uh, you know, you're drinking or you're smoking or whatever, and you're, you're like, yeah, let's go, and you go all out, and you, and you, you kind of throw away any inhibitions you had. You're like, well, i got to watch my weight and this, and then you, you drink, and you're like, oh, well, I've already drank, so let's just go all the way. Let's get the steak and cheese sandwich at 2 in the morning with fries and a Coca-Cola and house that. House it. Eat it quick. Quick, heavy, and uh, and then go to sleep on it. So um, I went to Olive Garden before the movie. I got the tour of Italy. Mm -mm -mm, Did I feel like I was back? Boy, oh boy, was it good, man! I mean, I don't I don't remember what the Olive Garden that I went to when I was a kid looked like, but this one, uh, it honestly did not look bad. I'm not gonna lie to you. It didn't look bad. It didn't look overly Italian. It didn't look... I mean, it looked decent inside. The outside is obviously excessive, but the inside, it didn't look too bad. And then uh, I got the salad and the breadsticks, and the breadsticks tasted good, but they were dry like a motherfucker, but they were honestly the best part of the whole meal. Salad was okay. It was like uh, it was like school salad. School lunch, it's like extra vinegary with fucking uh, purple lettuce in it. You know what I'm talking about? It's got the, the carrots the string carrots, and you eat that, and it's like, uh, it's fine, you know, it's okay. It's got the Italian dressing, but it's too much. Like, it's okay, whatever. It's got olives in it. I like olives, the green olives. So I was fine. I was fine with that, and the breadsticks were good. And uh, and then the actual meal came out, and I was like, oh, this is terrible. It, it, the, so for those of you that don't know, the tour of Italy is, uh, is three items uh, where two of them – you probably rarely find in Italy. There's um, chicken parm, which you'll probably never find unless you go to some Americanized uh, restaurant trying to get tourists. Chicken parm, piece of chicken parm, and then uh, next to that was fettuccine alfredo, which is the antithesis of culturally appropriate Italian food. It is the exact opposite of most Italian food. They don't really use a lot of cream ever. Uh, Alfredo, by the way, is just pasta with butter. We just added cream because we are, of course, fat gluttons who uh, have gout and are given everything. We have the King's disease over here in America. So we, uh, and we factory farm, of course. That's important too. How, how can we have all of the gallons of fettuccine alfredo that is served every second of every day if we don't have cows to produce the milk that we turn into the cream that becomes the fettuccine alfredo that your six-year-old will become dependent on from an early age and uh, it'll be the only thing that they can eat until they're a fucking adult and they're going to be 25 years old with the palate of a fucking of a of a mule of a baby mule it's it's going to be it's that's that that is what it is. I mean, mac and cheese is one thing. OK, mac and cheese is an American thing. I, I saw a uh, I saw a video of this like Italian chef, this real pretentious asshole on Inst- on Facebook, um, Vincenzo, whatever the fuck his name is. Sometimes when you're fucking around, you really got nothing, nothing to watch. And I like watching this guy be a dick. And he watches uh, people prepare things and whatever, and he, and he shits on them. And uh, I forgot where I was even going. I think it had to do with the Alfredo sauce. But, um, yeah, I mean, whatever. Fuck that thought. There, uh, the, the, it, it, but it's important to know 
The, oh, okay. Mac and cheese. I apologize for that little uh, that little fuck up. He was reviewing like um, bastardized American foods, like foods that have been whatever, uh, like awful imitations of Italian food. And he was talking about Alfredo and chicken parm or whatever. And I had agreed with him up until that point. But then he says macaroni and cheese. And I'm like, that's not Italian. Just because they use macaroni and cheese, it's, it's a different fucking thing, right? Mac and cheese is, I feel like that's American. You know, that's that's uh, that's Southern baked mac and cheese. That's its own fucking thing. You know, so that guy was being a cocksucker on that one. But fettuccine Alfredo, it's some of the grossest shit. It's uh, I don't even like like fettuccine carbonara anymore. You know, fettuccine carbonara is basically Alfredo, but they add peas and bacon and uh sometimes some other stuff and it's just too much it's so fucking much how do you order that how do you just sit and eat a big bowl of pasta covered in cream <laughs> you know like i mean i love pink sauce i get it it's it it tastes okay i suppose but alfredo is like oh god it's literally cream and cheese and it's just uh Make a mac and cheese at that point. Might as well go mac and cheese. You might as well go mac and cheese there. But Alfredo is like the, uh, it's like the treat for children. It's not, it, mac and cheese is like the normal shit that they eat six, six days a week. And on the seventh day, they eat Alfredo. And then you wonder why people grow up and they have uh, no inclination. They have no idea about diet. They have no inclination about how certain foods affect their bodies you know and i'm one of them i'm not saying that i'm uh, i mean it took me time to realize not to eat a uh you know an entire bowl of pasta before having to go do something right having to go uh to a class or or to the gym or some shit like that you know it's if you're gonna eat a bowl of pasta you eat it the night before a big something right like if if i'm gonna go on a hike uh, the night before i'll eat a fucking pound of pasta because those carbs will be stored and it'll be good to go. That's, but we don't understand. We don't realize that shit in health class. They'd rather tell us about, uh, you know, smoking cigarettes or burning your dick off, right? And and neither of them in a realistic light. You know that burning your dick off. Don't watch out. You got to use condoms or you'll burn your dick off. Don't smoke weed, don't smoke a cigarette, don't drink alcohol, put on these goggles, watch out, you're going to kill everyone you know and yourself, or you'll end up in jail and then you'll kill yourself there. Don't, do, that's what they'd rather teach you in health class. Vague exaggerations of, uh, of, of shit that they, of outcomes that only happen to s certain types of people, certain archetypes of people will smoke weed one day and start doing heroin a month later. That's, there's only certain people that do that. There's only certain people that end up getting AIDS. You follow or some other horrible STD. It happens, yes, and you should be worrisome. But that should not be the focus of the class, of a health class, right? The focus of a health class should be overall health, right? And if you want to pick a, a, a particular area of focus each quarter or each semester or whatever in high school, then that's fine. You can do that. You can pick a focus, but it has to be broad. It can't be these, the worst case scenario. You can make it present, but that can't be the whole thing, you know? And one thing that's never, ever, now I don't remember a health class ever benefiting me in any way. I've never walked away from a health class and said, wow, that was, uh, I learned some stuff. It was always your, your gym teacher who said, well, don't eat the fat on the, on the steaks when you, when you eat a steak. I know, I know it looks good and it tastes good, but don't eat the fat off the steak. Sometimes you can't, you can't every once in a while, but you can't do that. You can get a salad. Get, a, get uh, you know, potatoes with, uh, with olive oil. You got to eat clean, good. And then every once in a while, you listen, the only way you lose weight is you got to eat less calories than you burn. And that's it. There's no, there's no, uh, there's, there's, and then, and then it's the other stuff, the drugs and the sex, right? Don't, 
uh, you you drink, you're gonna fucking uh, you know take someone from their family. Yes, does happen. Happens sometimes for sure. Not good, but a lot of things happen sometimes. Okay, sometimes people die. There's a lot of ways to die. All right. And uh, banning or scaring or stigmatizing a substance or an item or a product that has caused people to die in some way, shape, or form, I mean, then what would be illegal? I mean, what would be legal, right? <clears throat> people who aren't drunk kill people with cars, right? Just because you're drunk doesn't make it any less of an accident is my question. What about buildings? People jump off of buildings. People jump off of high things. Are we going to stop building high things because people die because of them? We can't. People die from fucking coconuts falling on their head. It, uh, that's a real thing, right? It has to be. People die from drowning. Can't outlaw the water. No one stigmatizes the water. Don't go out in the water. If you go out in the water one day, you might uh, end up liking it a lot and living out there in the water. And your whole life will be ruined because you've devoted your entire existence to the water. Don't spend too much time in the water. Right? It's the same thing. Some people end up smoking crack out of a hooker's asshole at 30 years old with no teeth. Because they got a little, a little bit into the booze when they were a little too young. Yes, it happens. But you can't demonize it. You can't scare people into not using it. We're kids. We're stupid. You're going to tell us that and say, well, fuck you. You know, well, I, I should say we're kids, but we're not stupid. I said we are stupid. You know, they give you, they, they give you no credit, right? They expect you in high school to figure out your life, and, uh, but at the same time, the way that they teach you is so juvenile. It's so childish, right? There's no, there's no emphasis on becoming an adult as quickly as they want you to be. They just want it to bang, sink or swim, right? But why did I even get on this whole fucking tangent anyway? I wanted to tell you guys how I got sick. Plus, I need to tell you about Christmas. So... <laughs> Uh, Olive Garden, yes, $45 at the Olive Garden. I packed up my food because I didn't want to seem rude. Oh, sorry, guys, itchy nose. I packed up my food. I uh, Oh, I'm sorry. The third thing was lasagna. I think in, uh, I think in spurts, right? I, I, I got to go back to the... Because th- I never told you the whole tour of Italy. And lasagna you'll find in Italy, but not like this. This was terrible. I mean, the whole thing was bad. It was just... Especially the Alfredo. The Alf- I've, I don't think I've ever had just fettuccine Alfredo. And it was fucking disgusting. I was just not a fan. It was like pasty and half dry. It wasn't good. It was like a really dry mac and cheese. But I, uh, I didn't like it and I was full anyway. I mean, how could you eat that whole thing? How could you eat that entire thing? It is just piles of meat and mush. Cheese, carbs, like pasta. When you look at pasta, it's like paste. It's like mush. When you chew on it, it's like goop, right? Joe Rogan talks about it a lot like that. Car, any kind of carb like that. You just, you mush it and it's got, it's got, uh, you know, calories and it's got energy and, and carbohydrates are obviously great, but it's, it, it, you can't have too much of it. And this entire plate is that plus cheese plus meat and and cream and it's just so and it's dairy and the plate is just so heavy i mean you need a lasagna you need a piece of lasagna you need a a a big helping of fettuccine alfredo and then you need a chicken parm on the end of that okay do you need that that's what you need really but that's what i ordered right because i knew i wasn't going to eat and i wasn't going to eat whatever the fuck they gave me uh i wasn't gonna eat the whole thing because I had already eaten like six of those fucking big breadsticks, right? You can't forget about that part. You're eating bread. 
So, uh, so I take it to go along with my cheesecake. And uh, before I even get in the cook, because I was so upset at how much money I spent and didn't even enjoy the meal, it was like 45 bucks. I put the food uh, in the box on the ground in the parking lot and drove the fuck away because I knew I wasn't going to eat that and I knew I shouldn't eat it. So I just really wanted to waste money. And that was money I was supposed to spend on Christmas gifts. So anyway, I, uh, I finished that little, little uh, adventure and I drive on over to the movie theater that's right next door to catch the 815 showing of Babylon, and I sat there, and I watched, and it was great, like I said, loved the movie, ate my fucking cheesecake, ate my Kit Kat bar, uh, spent $5 on a bottle of water there instead of getting it at the gas station that I went to to get the Kit Kat bar in the first fucking place, forgot a drink, so I had to buy one there, bottle of water, spent, uh, I don't know, $25 or something on that movie trip, which is fine, I'm happy to do that, but after spending 45 and then also needing gas... It was, you know, it was kind of a lot of money uh, to do nothing. So I, uh, movie ends, okay? It's almost midnight. It's a really long movie. It's like three and a half hour movie. And like I said, Friday, it was absolutely frigid. And now it's midnight, okay? It's midnight on, uh, and, a, and it's 11 degrees out, okay? It's like 11, 12 degrees out. And I go to my car. Right, I started my car. I'm giving it a minute while I'm waiting inside. Uh, I go to the bathroom, and then I go outside. Car's probably been running for five minutes, and by that point, my temperature gauge is moving. And uh, obviously, you want your temperature gauge to be in the middle. And if it's in the middle, then uh, that means when I start driving, my heat will work quicker than if I had just started the car and started driving. Now, I sh- it's also worth mentioning that my heat does not work unless, you guessed it, I'm driving. So, uh, now here's the problem, right? Very cold out, frigid. My windshield is absolutely frosted, and I can't see. I can't see. There's nothing I can, there's, there's no way I, uh, and the defrosters are just blowing cold air. So it's doing literally nothing. It's doing nothing at all. The Defrosters are, aren't doing a thing. Uh, and now I'm looking at my gas. I'm like, I'm running low on gas. I, I don't know what the fuck to do. I'm sitting there for 20 minutes in this freezing car with the air blowing, trying to figure out what to do. I'm throwing uh, water on it from a water bottle, and it's just freezing instantly. I'm trying to spray it with stuff and see if it would, you know, the alcohol. And I had like a, like an air freshener that I sprayed on it to see if it would do, and it just froze. It was terrible, and I had no idea what the fuck to do. So I was like, fuck, I have no option. I have, I have to get this thing going. So I just start leaning out of my, I roll my window down, 11 degrees out, okay? Roll my window down, and I start driving down the road, 40 miles an hour, driving, and my face is just frigid, my head is cold, my hat's about to fly off my fucking head, my chest is out the window, (coughs) it's fucking bad, guys, it is as cold as I've ever felt, it's the coldest I've ever felt, and I had to do that for a little while, and uh, I was driving back and forth in the parking lot, then eventually I left the parking lot to try and get to the gas station down the street, hanging out my window, guys, Frigid, 11 degrees, driving, wind chill, murder. And, uh, and yeah, I think that's why I got sick. Eventually, I went and picked up my weed and got home because that's what I needed to go do. I needed to go get weed. Got home, and, uh, and my apartment was cold as a bitch. It was cold as a bitch, so I had to bundle up, and I felt myself getting sick. I fell right asleep, uh, and I was just sick. I was sick like a motherfucker. And that was on Friday. I went to work feeling like dog shit. Um, And then I got out of work Saturday at like 9.30. The apartment's still cold. I had to bundle up. And that's uh, Christmas Eve, right? So now we're getting into what I did for the holidays. So Christmas Eve, I go to work early in the morning. I wanted to do a double uh, because I thought I was going to get holiday pay. They said, no holiday pay. I said, fuck you. I'm going home then because I'm sick and I feel like a bag of smashed assholes. I made the money I wanted to make. I'm going home. And I went home and I bundled up and my apartment was still fucking frigid, guys. I mean, there was no relief. No relief. I get in my car. It's cold, 
right? I drive. It finally warms up. I have, I have heat for about 15 minutes. I get out of the car at Mohegan Sun, and now I'm cold again because I'm in the parking garage, and then now I'm in Mohegan. Nice. But, uh, but then I got to drive home. It's cold for, 50, for, for however long it takes for the car to warm up. Then I get home, and it's cold in my apartment. It's just pain. It's pain and misery and sadness. No, it, uh, <laughs> it really was me just fucking around with the thermostat and, and fucking with it and not understanding uh, if it's on the heat mode or not because it's a stupid, it's dumb. Like, why does, why does the sun mean heat? Why not just have the words heat? Why do you have to fuck with us? Why are you giving us symbols? Why did we ever evolve to having uh, language and letters and writing if you're still going to use symbols, Mitsubishi, you stupid fucking morons, stop using symbols. Why, why? Just say what the fuck it is. Heat, air. Heat, air. What the fuck? It's annoying. I'm sitting here in the fucking cold giving myself pneumonia, freezing. So anyway, uh, Christmas Eve, I worked all day uh, for the most part. Because when I got home, I went right to sleep. And I slept like 12 hours, which is what I've been trying to do to get rid of this fucking sickness. And then uh, I went to go do a double on Christmas Day, which was holiday pay. But I was offered the night off, which I gladly took. And uh, I got paid a bunch of money. People offered me, uh, not offered, but in terms of tips, Christmas, people were... Very liberal with their tips, so I thank them for that. And, uh, and then I came home, and I wanted to go meet the boys for the, uh, the Christmas tradition of going to Jackie's Galaxy, which is the hometown Chinese spot, and uh, eating there and getting shit-faced drunk on Christmas. Because those are the real traditions, right? I listened to a, Sta- a, a Doug Stanhope bit recently, and... Uh, He goes, all traditions are stupid except for the ones you come up with yourself. You and your buddies, you meet up to go do something, whatever, whatever he said. Uh, That's fine. And And I resonate with that very much so. Because at least you came up with it. You have a basis for it. You understand why you're doing it. It's not some stupid thing that you just do because it's been passed down to you. And we do it every day. Well, every... Every uh, 15th of April, we go down to the lake house and we all stand by the tree that our great-grandfather planted, which sprouted the rest of these trees. And then we all uh, sit around. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's very strange. It's just people not willing to let go of the past. And, and I get it. There is something comforting there. It is cool to, to know that, you know, your grandfather slept in this particular dumpster or something. I don't know. And you go there and visit and you shoot heroin in his honor. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever it is that you do. It is nice. It's nice. That's why people like doing them. That's why they're traditions. That's why they get passed on. But they're also stupid. They're stupid. Um, and uh, But again, if you created it, right, which those examples that I just uh, came up with were all examples of someone creating it on their own, regardless of the negative connotation I surrounded it with. Um you know, it's, uh, I have to agree with that. Now that that's a tradition that I kind of look forward to, you know, and I, and I fucked up and I wasn't able to make it because I still felt sick. Then I got home and I got in the shower and I started smoking weed and I got comfortable and I was like, ah, I, I also needed to get the podcast up for yesterday. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. We'll be fine. And then, uh, you know, I ordered Chinese food. I stayed in, I got high I watched The Twilight Zone. One of my favorite fucking things to do is getting high and watching The Twilight Zone. Um, isn't it so interesting when a piece of media can just withstand the test of time? That shit still holds up. It's still entertaining. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I never watched the Jordan Peele uh, reboot. I'm sure it's good. I'm sure it's good, but uh, I'm, a, I'm like a traditionalist, I guess. In some senses, not always, but in some senses, I am, and I uh, I really like the original version. But uh, that's what I did for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I worked, I made some money, and then I uh, went to sleep real early. And then uh, Monday, yesterday, was, uh, I guess, what you would call the traditional 
dinner, gather with family, festivities that you would partake in on Christmas. So uh, what I did was I head down to Providence early in the afternoon. I got all my gifts together, got down there, and I did, uh, we did gifts at my parents' house, got to hang out with my brother before I went to work. And then I found out that we were eating at night. I was hoping to do comedy. I was hoping to do the this episode la- yesterday after after uh, hanging out with the family or whatever, or beforehand. It would have been good to do beforehand, but it doesn't matter because we're doing it now. God damn it! And uh, I got there. I got there too early, really, because we were going to eat at seven thirty. I didn't realize that. So I went to go spar, which is great. Feels good to be sparring again. Uh, I want to get as much of that in as I can before I move to New York and won't be able to spar pretty much ever. Um, hopefully I find a gym that at least has a bag or something that I'm able to afford and, and live with. But, um, yeah, that's what I did. And then we ate, and I got my Christmas money, Christmas gifts, the whole nine. So, And that's it, motherfuckers. That's, uh, that's, that was my time. Oh, I'm, I, I didn't finish the best part and why I didn't get this episode out early today. I ended up hanging out with a buddy until uh, 2 a.m. or something, driving around with him and talking shit and having a good time. And, uh, and I didn't get back here until 3 a.m. and I was able to get my shift covered. I was supposed to work today, but fuck that and fuck you. How about that? I'm doing the bare minimum. I got paid for Christmas, baby. That's what's most important. That's what's most important about the holidays is that you get paid. You get paid. You get the good, you, you know, get get some good gifts. Get some good shit, man. Fuck what everybody says about the family and the who and the ha. No. Good shit. You got to get good stuff. That's what's most important about these these stupid, baseless, capitalistic tradition holidays that we all engage in. They're all just who gets the best shit, what free shit do I get in this point of the year, how much money do I get, what kind of time off do I get, what do I get, what am I getting for this time? That's what matters. You can't lose sight of that. You can't. You have to understand that this point of the year is all about getting. Getting. There's some giving, but it's most important. It's the getting. Even the giving is to give yourself satisfaction, right? If you don't get somebody the right shit, then, you know, if you give somebody lame gifts, you don't want to be the one who's the lame, you know. You know my point. You got to be, you got to keep tallies on what you're getting and what you're going to get. That's all that matters. Uh, But I am, (laughs) I'm happy that we've gotten past that point in the year. And we're almost done. We only have so many more uh, days left. What's today? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday's New Year's Eve. Sunday is 2023. Uh, and Thursday is going to be our last episode until uh, the spring of 2023. So we're going to try and get another one out tomorrow to you. I might be working. I might not be. Either way, we're going to try and get another one out to you at some point. Um Again, not super strict with it. And then Thursday, normal time, last episode. Not sure if it's going to be anything special or not. I, I, you know, it is what the fuck it is. But uh, I think that's it, motherfuckers. We're going to wrap this up a little early than normal. Like I said, it's a little bonus, a little something extra because I, I, I want to hit that 260. I do want to hit that 260. And uh, I want to leave you guys uh, with some fun stuff until the spring. So... Uh, that's it, motherfuckers. I'm done talking to you. Talk to you tomorrow. Peace. Oh, me again. Follow the show. Subscribe on the YouTube. Buy me a coffee. Use the links. Bye-bye.